welcome to LPB's February Play and Learn. So why is it that the shortest month of the year is probably one of the most exciting months? There's Valentine's Day on February 14th. I love celebrating love. There is, oh, Mardi Gras for those of us who live in Louisiana. Throw me something, mister. There's also President's Day. And this year, it will be February the 20th. It's always the third Monday of the month of February. And that is when we celebrate all the presidents who made this great country. But do you know what really makes February a fantastical month? Well, we're going to play and learn to see why today. It's Black History Month, and we're going to celebrate all these heroes and trailblazers who have made a difference in our world. George Washington Carver was a scientist and an inventor who found hundreds of uses for peanuts. He experimented with the legumes to make lotions, flowers, soaps, dyes, plastic, and gasoline, so not peanut butter. George Washington Carver showed us it's our responsibility to take care of the earth. Let's watch a clip from Xavier Riddle as George shows Xavier that being responsible means people can count on you and you can take care of who and what's around you. Hi, Furby. Hello. <laughs> Meet our class pet, Shelly. <laughs> no. <laughs> Today, I'm in charge of feeding him and watching over him during recess. Xavier, hurry! Everyone is going outside to play tag! <gasps> that is my favorite game. Oh, I'm supposed to be taking care of Shelly. What do I do? You're it! <laughs> <gasps> Sorry, but I'll be back later. I don't want to miss the fun. I'll only be gone for a minute. Oh, I remember George Washington Carver. He was an African-American scientist who cared a lot about plants and the whole world around him. He showed us that it's our responsibility to take care of the Earth. See, Shelly? Being responsible means people can count on you, that you make good choices and take good care of who and what's around you. I get it. I do want to go play, but I have to look after who and what I'm responsible for. <laughs> even when it's hard. But you're not just my responsibility, Shelly. You're my friend, too. And you must be hungry. It's feeding time. I am responsible. <laughs> oh, I'm it, Burby. Um, tag drip. <laughs> oh. Ooh, this game might take a while. George Washington Carver once said, in nature, there is no waste. We should all do our part to help protect our environment. And you know, there are several ways that we can do that using things that we have in our house and in our backyard or front yard. Miss Nancy is here today with McKenna and she's going to show you how to make a pine cone bird feeder using things that you probably can find in your kitchen. Okay, McKenna, you ready to make our bird feeder? I am. Okay, so all you're gonna need are a few things from home that are easy to find, and one is a pine cone, and you can, of course, find these under pine trees, and they're falling out of the trees right now. And you'll need some peanut butter, and we also need something for the birds to eat. And I have some actual bird food that we bought here, but if you didn't have that at home, can you think of some things that birds might want to eat at, on your bird feeder? Raisins, seeds, sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. kind of seeds. Yes, yeah, seeds, nuts, uh, bread, crackers. So you don't have to go buy bird food. We just happen to have some um, here. So we're going to go ahead and use it. So you ready to start? So we've already put a string on your bird feeder. So um, all you have to do is hang it in the tree. So we'll just try to keep this out of the way while you put your peanut butter on. But all you're gonna do is you're going to take the peanut butter and you're going to try to put it in between, you know, right here on the things of the pine cone. So I'm gonna let you do that and then we'll sprinkle some bird food. Okay, 
Greg McKenna. So the next step we're gonna do is we're going to, you can just take your fingers and sprinkle the bird seed onto the peanut butter as best you can. Great Get job, I love it. There's a really great game on pbskids.org and you can click on Cat in the Hat and go to games and it's called Super Cleaner Upper. And this game is great because it teaches you how to recycle and clean up the environment. So this is um, taking care of the world we live in, but it's done in a really fun way. So let's get started and I'll show you how to play. I'm gonna click on the play button. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the cat around the screen. Use the space bar to jump up onto platforms. Press the up arrow to recycle items that are made by people. Press the down arrow key to compost debris that comes from nature. This neighborhood needs to be cleaned up. These come from people and should be recycled. These come from nature and go into compost. Okay, so I think we're ready to play. So we need to use our left and right arrows to move left and right. And to jump on the platforms, you're gonna hold your space bar down. Um, so let's get started and we're gonna sort the items we find and we're gonna determine whether they're recyclable or they have to go in the compost bin. So let's play. So I'm going to use my arrow keys and I'm gonna jump and there's something you here. You found a hamburger wrapper. So a hamburger wrapper uh, should go, I think, in the recycle bin. So I'm gonna click on the recycle bin. Yay, you recycled this piece of trash so it doesn't hurt any animals. Okay, so I see a banana peel up here. So I'm gonna try to jump on these platforms, which is your said and done. You have to hold your space bar down to jump. Forward. Go back and find more. You found a banana peel. So the banana peel, I think, should go in the compost pile. So I'm gonna click on the leaf. Good job. That was natural debris. Okay. Oh, I see a milk in here. And here's a sandwich. You found a half-eaten sandwich. So the sandwich I know should go in the compost bin. So I'm gonna click nice. on these. Nice, you composted and helped the environment. And so that's what you do. You just travel around this maze here of platforms. And try to you found a items. plastic shopping bag. So a plastic shopping bag should go in the recycle bin. Yay! You recycled this piece of trash so it doesn't hurt any animals. So that's how you play Super Cleaner Upper. Clementine Hunter was born in late 1886 or early 1887. Hunter worked as a farm laborer in her early life. She never learned how to read or write and she never had any art lessons. She used paints that were left or other art materials that were left by an artist who often visited the plantation. Hunter painted in the evenings after working a day in the plantation house. She used whatever materials she could find, including canvas and wood, gourds, and plastic milk jugs. Hunter's paintings use bright colors and show the everyday life of the black community. She created between 5,000 and 10,000 paintings. Like many folk artists, she painted from memory. Clementine Hunter painted with love and enthusiasm. Well, McKenna, we're so happy that you're here today. And I want to tell you that Clementine Hunter loved to paint zinnias. And zinnias are a very bright flower that are very popular here in the South. So we have a special guest today, Mr. Matt, and he's going to show you how to create a beautiful picture of zinnias, just like Clementine Hunter. So for today's artwork, we're going to need three things. We need paper and some type of marker or crayon or pencil color, whatever you have at home, and your imagination. So let's get started. 
So the first thing you'll do is make a smiley face with a dark marker or any other, a black marker or any other dark color that you have. And then the next thing we'll do is draw the sides of the face. And draw the bottom with another smiley face. Okay, moving forward, we're going to draw the centers of the flowers. And so what you'll need to do is draw from six to eight uh, circles, small circles, spread around. So try to spread them out a little bit. And these will be the centers of the flowers. Put one up here too. Now we're going to draw the outside of the flowers. And that's going to be kind of a, a wobbly uh, circle around the inner circle. So just kind of make a little wobbly circle there. You can also have them overlap if you want to make it more three-dimensional. You can draw where one flower overlaps the other. Or you can just have them all separate. So the next thing we'll do is draw the stems of the flowers. And those are just kind of curved lines from the flower down into the pot. Okay, the next thing we'll do is add some additional stems. Just coming out the sides and maybe a little bit out the middle. And those are just curved lines. And if you like, you can also add some leaves kind of hanging over the, over the side. And that's just going to be a triangle shape. Now we're going to put the other leaves on the stems. And what I like to do is just draw a teardrop shape. Or an oval can be the same thing. And add some on the stems further down. Okay, now we're ready to color. So pick your medium that you're going to use. It can be a pencil color, marker, or crayon. And choose, the way I like to do the flowers is put a light colored center inner flower and then a dark colored outer, outer flower. So, so one tip about coloring, you always want to use strokes that are in the same direction. And what I mean by that is don't do it all scribbly, scrabbly. Just do it like this and that way your drawing will be a lot neater. So now we'll start with our darker color and go around the outside of the flower. The next thing we're going to do is color the leaves and make some of them into buds. I like to use two different colors of green to make it more, give it more depth. And leave the tips of the last leaves white so you can color in a, a flower color on that. The next thing we'll want to do is color some of the leaves in the background. So take your light green marker and what we'll do is kind of make an oval in between our flowers that represents the leaves that are in the back and behind the flowers. I like to use a lighter green and then I'm going to go back and put some dark green marks in there as well. Just a few marks here and there to break it up a little bit. Now we're going to do the color of the vase. We need to pick a color it can be any color that you like. I'm going to go with light blue for mine. And I'm going to turn the paper so that I don't have to turn my hand. It's much easier to turn the paper. And I'm just going to color my vase by using straight lines to keep it neat. You can add handles or designs or anything to your vase that you want. Some of Clementine Hunter's vases had one handle. Some of them had two handles and some had, had none. The last thing we need to do is choose a background color. I'm going to go with yellow for mine. And color the background like we did with the, with the vase, just with long straight strokes. And 
When you're all finished coloring your background, the last thing you need to do is sign your masterpiece. Clementine Hunter liked to use her initials. So I'm going to put mine, which are M and B, right in the lower right corner. And now you have it work. Can you tell me more about Clementine Hunter? Sure, she was a slave and was born in 1886. She lived on the Melrose Plantation, but she didn't start painting until she was 50 years old. And she liked to paint things around her and uh, scenes from everyday life in addition to flowers. How old when, was she when she died? She was a hundred years old. Wow, that's old. <laughs> what she, else did she put, uh, paint besides flowers? She painted pictures of animals and dogs and cats and people and churches, all sorts of things that she saw in her everyday life. If you don't have any painting or drawing materials at home to do the Clementine Hunter style zinnias that Mr. Matt showed you how to draw, you can always open up this great scribbles and in ink um, art game. It's called In and Out. So you just would go to pbskids.org slash scribbles and in ink and you would click on in and out. So I have a tool here. Your tools are down here and notice I can click on the tools and get these tools that I can use. I'm gonna use the pencil. Notice this is the thickness of my pencil. I'm choosing the medium thickness. And just like Mr. Matt showed McKenna, I'm gonna draw a smiley face for my vase. I'm going to draw the sides. So I'm just using, pressing and holding my mouse. This is going to be the base of my base. I'm going to put one handle on my base. And let's see, I'm going to do my little circles for my flowers, for my zinnias. I'm going to change my tool and get a smaller pencil to do my squiggly lines. Okay, so now if I want to change colors, all I have to do is uh, choose a different color. So um, if you remember, Mr. Bat told you to do the um, dark colors on the outside. So I'm going to take a red color and I'm going to just color the outsides of my flowers. Now you also could use another tool. Uh, this paint can probably would be really good for you for the outside of your flowers. I'm just holding down my mouth. Change to my pink. I'm going to do my center yellow. I'm going to go back to my pencil. And there you go. So I'm using scribbles and in ink in and out on pbskids.org 
to paint my Clementine Hunter zinnias. Well, we have a very special person reading for us today, Miss Kara St. Cyr, and she's actually a reporter, a journalist, a news anchor here at LPB. I'm wondering if somebody was interested in becoming like a journalist or a reporter, what kind of advice would you give them? I would advise them to always be curious because you never know and that's the beauty of this business is you're, there's always something to discover. So be curious. Also be talkative. I talk so much. Don't be afraid to talk to everybody around you. You never know who's going to have your next story. <laughs> and lastly I guess just, mm, this sounds really cliche but be confident because you have to be whenever you're going to be going up to these people and asking them questions. So be curious, be talkative, and be confident. Those are That's the best advice that I can give. I love that. That's great. So Kara's going to be reading from a book about three very important people in our black American culture. And this book is called Young, Gifted, and Black. Thanks, right. Kara. So we're going to start with Shirley Chisholm. I didn't learn about her until I got to college, so I wanted to share this one because I think that her career and everything that she did was super exciting. So Shirley began her life as the first of four daughters born to immigrant parents. At five, she sailed to Barbados to live on her grandmother's farm while her parents worked in New York. She went to a one-room schoolhouse with strict teachers who helped her refine her speaking and writing talent, and it got her very far in life. She ended up being the first African-American congresswoman in the U.S., and eventually she did want to run for president. So her life, her career, all of it was very, very interesting and inspiring. In 1939, Shirley returned to Brooklyn at Brooklyn College. A professor noticed her quick mind and debating skills and urged her to pursue politics. She joined the debate team and she started her own club after another group barred blacks, which of course is really amazing that she started her own group and decided that she wasn't gonna let any of that get in her way. So her drive led Shirley to become the first African-American candidate to run for president in 1972, like I said earlier. And in 2015, President Obama named her a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And that is her story. So the next person is Mae Jemison. She was born on October 17, 1956 in Decatur, Alabama. So she's a Southern girl just like me. May was fascinated by astronomy and the workings of the human body. Her childhood interest in science and medicine led her to study biochemical engineering at Stanford University and later to become a doctor for the Peace Corps in Sierra Leone and Liberia. Those places are in Africa. So she went all over the world. Her passions took her there. So May said, I always knew I'd go to space and she pursued this lifelong dream when she returned to the U.S. She applied for NASA's astronaut training program and became the first African-American woman in their space program in 1987. In 1992, she soared to even higher heights as the first African-American woman to travel into space. So the last person that I wanted to choose was Louis Armstrong, and I wanted to choose him specifically because he's from Louisiana, and he's a big part of our culture. He was a famous jazz musician, and he influenced tons of musicians that we listen to today. So of course, Louis was born in a section of New Orleans that was so rough, it was dubbed the battlefield. After his father left, he was forced to drop out of school so he could collect junk and deliver coal to help support his family. So later on in Louis's life, he got into a little bit of trouble and he got sent to a boy's home, but it ended up working out for him because that's where he was able to find his love of music. Uh, someone there introduced him to jazz. In 1914, horn player Joe King Oliver taught Lewis and let him play in his place. This earned him a gig with the finest band in town, Kids Ori. Lewis rose to fame in the 1920s for his vocal and trumpet mastery. His swinging sounds and acting helped the Grammy Hall of Fame winning singer capture the hearts of his generation and beyond. I've got a lot of good songs that I know by Louis Armstrong, and that's Levian Rose, and of course his most famous one, which is what a wonderful world. But Livy and Rose is my favorite. And that's it. What is a celebration without a dance? Traditionally, the African American culture started the second line in their neighborhoods as a neighborhood celebration. So here is Miss Cherie and some of her friends to show us the second line.
February's Play and Learn, celebrating Black History Month. Mostly, we hope that you've been motivated and inspired by our stories of all these pioneers and heroes. And of course, we hope that you've enjoyed our activities. We'll see you this summer with more fun with Play and Learn that you and your family can do together.